This is a quick six step tutorial in ABG interpretation. First, let's review the normal values. Normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Normal CO2 is 35 to 45. CO2 is an acid and is from the respiratory system. Normal bicarb is 22 to 26. Bicarb is a base from the metabolic system. Normal PaO2 is 80 to 100 percent, SaO2 is greater than 95 percent, and base excess is negative 2 to plus 2. When discussing compensation, full compensation means that the pH is within normal values, so 7.35 to 7.45. It also means that the CO2 and the bicarb are out of range in opposite directions, means one will be high, one will be low. Partial compensation means the pH is abnormal, so less than 7.35 or greater than 7.45 and that the carbon dioxide and bicarb are out of range in opposite directions again. No compensation means the pH is abnormal, so less than 7.35 or greater than 7.45, and either the CO2 or bicarb is out of range, or both the carbon dioxide and bicarb are out of range in the same direction, so they'll both be low or they'll both be high. When looking at the six-step interpretation process, we'll use the same example ABG for all six steps, of course. The first thing you want to do is step one. Is this ABG normal or abnormal? Look at the O2, CO2, and bicarb. Are any of them abnormal? In this example, yes. The pH is low. It's less than 7.4. 7.4 will be our home base for all of our pH in ABG interpretation. Anything within the 7.35 to 7.45 range is technically normal, but we'll look at how it deviates from 7.4. So 7.37 is low. The carbon dioxide is low at 31, and the bicarb is high at 28. Step two, is hypoxemia present? If the O2 is less than 80%, hypoxemia is present. Later on, when we're looking at interpreting our example ABGs, we're going to assume that hypoxemia is not present on any of the following examples. Step three, is there an acid-base disturbance? A. Are either the CO2 or bicarb abnormal? In this example, yes. The bicarb is low at 31 because it's less than 35, and the bicarb is high at 28 because it's greater than 26. So, yes, we'll go to step 3B. Th step 3B is the pH greater than? or less than 7.4. Our pH is less than 7.4 because it's 7.37. This indicates an acidosis. We now know that this example ABG is an example of acidosis. Step four, which abnormal could cause this disturbance? This means which Bicarb or carbon dioxide is the same abnormal as the pH. So in this example, we're looking to see which one is also acidotic since our pH is acidotic at 7.37. In this example, because the CO2 is low at 31, indicating an acidosis, we know that respiratory is the cause because CO2 is a respiratory problem and bicarb is a metabolic problem. We now know we have a respiratory acidosis. Step five, has there been any compensation for the disturbance? Is the parameter not responsible for the disturbance abnormal? 
We know that the CO2, the carbon dioxide, is responsible for our disturbance because we have a respiratory acidosis. So let's look at the bicarb. Is the bicarb abnormal? Yes. Our bicarb is abnormally high at 28. Therefore, we know that this is somewhat compensated. Step six, to what degree has there been compensation? If the pH is greater than 7.45 or less than 7.35, the disturbance is partially compensated. If the pH is within normal limits between 7.35 and 7.45, the disturbance is fully compensated. Our pH is 7.37. That is normal. This means we have a compensated respiratory acidosis. Now let's practice. As I said before, we will assume that our PaO2, our SaO2, and our base excess are all normal for these examples. We'll simply look at our pH and our carbon dioxide and bicarb. For a pH of 7.31, is that normal? low or high. 7.31 is a low pH. A carbon dioxide of 29 is a low carbon dioxide. A bicarb of 27 is a high bicarb. What does that mean? A pH of 7.31 is low and abnormal CO2 of 29 is low, bicarb of 27 is high. This means our CO2 caused our acidosis. We know we have a respiratory acidosis. Our bicarb is high to try to help compensate, but our pH is not quite within the normal range of 7.35 to 745 because our bicarb is trying to compensate for the respiratory acidosis, we have a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. What about a pH of 7.5, carbon dioxide of 39, and a bicarb of 32? pH of 7.5 is abnormally high. This indicates an alkalosis, a CO2, of 39 is within range. A bicarb of 32 is high, also indicating an alkalosis. We know we have a metabolic alkalosis. Our pH is high and abnormal. Our carbon dioxide is normal. Our bicarb is high. Because our CO2 is within normal range, we have an uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. Let's look at one more example. A pH of 7.43, CO2 of 32, and a bicarb of 30. A pH of 7.43 is slightly high, but within normal limits. This indicates an alkalosis. CO2 of 32 is slightly low. A CO3 or a bicarb of 30 is slightly high. This indicates a metabolic alkalosis because both the pH and the bicarb are high. Because the pH of 7.43 is high but normal and the, CO, the bicarb are both high, we know we have a metabolic alkalosis. Because the CO2 is normal, I'm sorry, abnormal in the opposite direction of the bicarb, it's trying to compensate for the alkalosis. Because our pH of 7.43 is within the normal range of 7.35 to 7.45. This is a compensated deficiency. 
So therefore, we have a compensated metabolic alkalosis. Pull up some more examples and keep trying to, you know, analyze these ABGs. The more you do it, the better you'll get, and then it will become second nature.